Hey, my friend, welcome back to the MindShift Podcast. I'm your host, Daryl Evans. And in today's episode, I'm excited to share with you another uh, section or segment from our AI Marketing Makeover class, where we work with entrepreneurs, founders, and heads of marketing on integrating, integrating AI into their marketing mix, flow, and strategy. Now, today, I want to take you behind the scenes in one of the modules where we talk all about turning strangers into customers, AKA lead generation. You know, today, many businesses that are softening in their revenue, they're seeing their revenue not crash, but seeing their revenue go down. Maybe they were a $5 million company, now they're down to four and a half or 4.2. Uh, I remember talking to a client that was at $21 million not long ago, and they're now at 10 and a half, pacing 11 million. That's a bit of a challenge. Um, wherever you are, right, whatever your number is, what we must understand is everything gets better in your business when we can get cold individuals, prospects, strangers ready to raise their hand and inquire about the product or service that you sell so that it can solve their problem. And so today we're going to talk about some of the core elements and the foundational frameworks that we use for lead generation not just lead generation at the top of the funnel, because I actually believe top of the funnel lead generation is not as valuable as it once was because there are people that are, and I'm going to save it for the class, but there are people that are information seekers and then there are people who are solution seekers. And we focus heavily in our framework on solution seekers. So today I'm going to share with you some of the core framework elements that we do in our powerful lead generation model. I'm going to give you some actionable steps that you can take uh, to turn your website visitors into uh, high valuable leads, your social media into high valuable leads. And really one of the things that has set things off for us and our agency, as well as our clients, and really my entrepreneurial journey over 34 years, and that is the BANT framework. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes clip from the AI Marketing Makeover, which is on demand and available for free. If you'd like to get the full three hour workshop, you can click the link somewhere beneath this uh, audio, wherever you're listening to it or video, wherever you're listening to it, and you can come in and take in the entire AI marketing makeover experience. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Take care. The section we're going to talk about now is the section. It is the Holy grail of all marketing. Once you understand who your buyer is, once you understand the uh, places, I mean, today we all know where to find our customers. I mean, it's, you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, we had to, we had to say, oh, you need to be on social media. Oh, you got to be on Instagram. Oh, you got to be on YouTube. Everyone knows now that I think everyone knows that you have to be in multiple places to find your customers online. And by the way, this is not to negate anything we do offline. This is not to negate traditional media. If you're a TV advertiser, great. If you're a radio advertiser, fantastic. If there's newspaper still in your area and that works for you, great. All of those old media uh, types, they still work. But what we're here, you know, we, we focus on digital and, and I've dedicated my entire business and model and, and mindset to digital. Um, I haven't been to a networking event since I don't know when. And it isn't because I don't love people. I love people, but I understand the power of leverage. And once I understood the power of leverage, it was hard to go back to a non-leveraged event or a non-leveraged process. So while I miss a lot of the people that I used to see in networking functions, I just cannot, I cannot ignore the math of really strong digital marketing, lead generation and customer acquisition. Just to give you an idea, and this is not to brag, but we launched a new Facebook ad campaign for the agency on October 3rd, just barely a month ago. And from October 3rd until the close of October, I think we generated something like 151 new leads for our business of people coming into our world. That is not people who said, I want to hire the agency today, but it was people who didn't know who we were. We presented a problem that we know that if our ideal persona saw that ad, they would vote to take a step to, to, to come into our world. And the interesting of, the interesting thing about lead generation is that whenever I'm talking to a business that is struggling, 
it almost always hinges on the fact that they haven't figured out how to get more leads in the door for their product or service. And that means e-commerce service SaaS, it doesn't really matter. And so lead generation means different things to different people, except the way I like to say is what we're trying to do is get someone to raise their hand and take a step towards you into your world. Doesn't mean yet they've got check in hand or a credit card in hand, or they're ready to check out, but how do we go from stranger to in your world? If I use the retail example, like Adidas, like I said, how do you get me to leave the house and get to the store? Doesn't mean I'm gonna buy anything yet, but how do I get to the threshold of the Adidas store, which is about 12 minutes away from my house? That's what we wanna talk about in lead generation. It's not a new concept. There are lots of things we can do, and I'm gonna address a few of those today. And each business here, um, if you need help thinking through lead generation, we certainly can, can uh, speak through a few of them during our time. But the question is, how do I get website traffic, whether it's website, social media, whatever it might be, how do I get perfect strangers to raise their hand and come into my world and become a lead? Now, what we realize, a lot of people focus so much on the activity of posting, the activity of writing, the activity of SEO. And actually, all of those things are just traffic channels. Those are the ones that sort of bring awareness to your product or service and get people to, to stop and notice you. The question is, is how do we get them to actually come into our world so that we can get them one step closer to buying? When I'm working with an e-commerce company, that might look like, how do we get them to download a coupon that maybe says 10% off or 20% off, uh, like, Adidas, like Adidas did to me? They sent me a 50% off coupon and it has an expiration date on it. So if I want to take them up on that offer, I've got to take and download that coupon into my app and go use that in the store. If I'm an agency like my, my current business, uh, what we use is the playbook that you guys have received a copy of today. We use that guide and have used that guide since 2017 in some way, shape or form. Sometimes it's done as a video, sometimes it's on. So we use that guide a number of different ways. Um, for an insurance industry, for example, like Linux, uh, that might be someone requesting a free quote, but even more so than a free quote, it could be someone just getting to the website and downloading something that says five ways to lower your auto insurance rates. I don't know exactly what insurance he sells, but I'm just spitballing a couple of ideas. The thing that we have to understand in lead generation, and the minute you accept this, your whole mind will open up to growth. And that is, everyone's not ready to buy today. It doesn't matter how good the offer is. It doesn't matter how, how, how proper the whole setting is. But there are four major triggers to people buying anything, anywhere, anytime. And if you want to write these down, I didn't make them up. They came from IBM. I learned them from IBM through some study back when I was in college and then in my own entrepreneurial journey in my 20s. And they go like this, budget, authority, need, and timing. The acronym is called BANT, B-A-N-T. B stands for budget. So we can have, for example, uh, those shoes that Adidas sent me the coupon for, because they know that I have bought those shoes in the past, those shoes are $228. Now, I've never bought a $228 pair of running shoes in my three and a half year running career, but I have bought a pair that was $190. So they probably are like, well, because they're the same brand, because they're the same type that he's bought before, maybe $228 works for him. But they don't know. They don't know. And I don't know. Now, the 50% coupon helps, let me tell you. <laughs> But budget is the first key. Authority is the second key. Now, authority in the old day with the way that um, IBM drew it up, authority for them was, were you speaking to the person who had the authority to buy? It was more of a sales philosophy back then. I have wrapped it into a digital, for, uh, a digital inbound marketing philosophy, which is, do they believe you're the authority, the brand, the expert to help them get what they want? 
So if we said that our buyer persona has a problem or a pain, that they're going on a path to find a solution to solve, and they come across your product in step four, and they get to a decision and say, huh, do I believe Brian's product is the right product? Do I believe that Michael is the provider for this home loan? They have to believe. So the A is, do they believe you're the authority to help them? Step three is need. And this one gets a little interesting. Do they really have a need? Like, do I really have a need for those new shoes? At the end of the day, no. Because I've got four pair of shoes, three. I've got three pair of running shoes. I'm getting close to wanting to trade out one of the pairs because you only should run on them for so many miles. By the way, I'm not that big of a runner. I'm not running marathons and ultra marathons. I'm not that into it, but I do put a fair number of miles on my shoes. But do I really have a need for those shoes? The answer is actually no. Now, I might want to buy them and they might entice me to do so. And that goes to the T in timing because they're creating a window of timing that they've made attractive for me. So from 228 to 115 makes that purchase a little bit more timing centric for me. And that's of course what marketers do. And that's what grocery stores do. And that's what car dealerships do. Everybody uses sales to kind of improve the timing mechanism. But just to remember budget authority, need and timing. The key with generating leads is a lot of people want to generate a lead that sits right before someone purchases. And then they wonder why the purchase, the person didn't purchase without thinking through the other factors, budget authority, need and timing. Okay. So there's a lot to cover in lead generation. What types of things do you do for lead generation? I know a lot of you are already marketing and a lot of you are savvy on this. So I'm not going to belabor the basics, but again, if you're an e-commerce store, then that could look like someone getting a discount, which is what uh, is one of the most popular things to do. Um, it could be that you uh, put someone on an interest list to be notified in advance of a new product release that maybe you know they're interested in based on previous buying behavior, but you put them on a previous, on an interest list that allows them to get access to that product early. If you're a service-based business, getting someone to attend a webinar or getting someone to download a guide or a checklist, um, getting giving someone tips to, to avoid a problem or a pain could be a way to get people into your world. Um, and of course, so, uh, software as a service, they have been brilliant at this for years. And that is of course the free trial, seven day free trial, 30 day free trial, basically come on in and try it before you buy it. Right? So the same thing inside of retail establishments, you get to try the clothes on before you head to the checkout stand. Okay. Let's go into the idea of these exercises. These ones are going to, again, we put a few in here for, for everyone just to keep it mixed up. And that is, you know, if you've already got lead magnets on your website, lead magnets, I just hate some of the marketing words we use today. Like I never called them lead magnets when I was offline. It just makes no sense, but that's what they call it. So I've got to call it that. Anyway, uh, what is the mechanism you're getting uh, someone to come into your world for? So you can say, you can take one of your common problems that you've worked on in step one, and you can come back and say, what type of lead magnet might address this problem for my customer? Another example, if you have already people coming to a landing page on your website, by the way, landing page is specific to advertising, but you can call it your homepage. You can call it your service page, your product page. Don't get too caught up with the vernacular of landing page but a page where someone's going to come interact with your business, it has a headline on it in all reasonably, it should have a headline. And so what you could do is you could say, Hey, um, I want to take this headline, put it in a chat GPT and ask it to suggest something that's more compelling, something that's more enticing, something that speaks more to the problem or the pain that your customer could be experiencing. Because for every X number of people that make it to the page in general, you should have why number of people taking the invitation. And that's, re that's really what I think about when I think about lead generation. It's like, if we're going to put an invitation in front of someone to take a step into our world, what would that be? And what would meet them where they are? For example, going back to Adidas, they gave me an invitation to act on this 50% off coupon. And so the third option here is kind of leading into social media. And that is what type of social posts could I be using 
to generate leads, right? So if you already have a lead magnet, if you already have something you're using to generate leads, then you can put that in here. If not, take one of the ideas you got from step two or exercise two, and then look at how it can create some social media posts. This is obviously one that a lot of people are familiar with. Plus there's a lot of tools that do this one now, um, but play with that one if you will. Hit the subscribe button so you can become a part of the MindShift community. We'll help you shift your mind so you can shift your results.